This is a demonstration of how to use the uh, stage machine uh, uh, elements of the uh, Quadros 2 software. As you saw, there was a stage machine table, and this is a stage machine diagram. And then you have actually four states here. And uh, now we're going to show you how to use the state machine tool that exists with the Quadros 2 uh, program. And now, by this stage, you have already used the Quadros 2 um, program. and you know how to um, uh, do the schematic capture file and then run it. So you just uh, create a new project here and as you've done it before uh, or if you want to have it in a certain folder you put it in a certain folder and then you have to give the file a, a name and then we'll just, uh, have to change the selected device here to stay with the default here we can actually change it to max series and the chip number is selected all right and here is starting a new project all right. Now we have to have a new file here, and this time we we'll just add a state machine file. Now there are one of the two ways to do it. We use the wizard here to input the table there. So we go from the table. The way to go actually from the table is a synchronous machine. You have a clock, and then you want to reset. So the default, this is the default that the program comes in. You can have as many as the state you want and then as many as the uh, inputs and outputs that, that you want here. And the example we had, we had four in the different states here and then we had one input and we had one output. Now this one here right now, you're not worried about the output right now. You will worry about, uh, see how many inputs you have. You have one input, you have one reset, and you have one clock then you have four states here then the other uh, the rest of it is now trying to um, understand how those relationships are defined so uh, and you can rename this thing to anything you want to um, in this case we'll just I'm um, just changing the input name to X so it will uh, reflect uh, what we had on the table and then um, and the states can change to anything you desire so you can rename them to whatever you want. Now we have to find the state. So going back to the table, right uh, right now, we have um, uh, uh, defined like a state one going to state two when the input is one on the second line. The same state when x is not one. And remember, if you had more than one input you can use the basic logic uh, as inputs which is AND, OR and inverter to uh, to define the relationships between the, the different inputs right now because we have only one input the input either is 0 or 1 but that could be as, as sophisticated as as possible that um, that you want it to be. So we just defined uh, here uh, the state from the table. This is right from the table that I uh, just showed at the beginning of this, and uh, putting the desired relationships here. Now, and this is screen. Next one is actually doing the output. So we call this Y. So we're going to rename it to Y, and then the next clock. What so we have to go back to the table and look at what at what conditions actually the y was one and define those states and the condition which means the, the input condition on that state and so we solved for there were only three times that the y was one if you look back the table and um, and and then and going and what state it was and what was the input uh, on that state in this case the uh, it was a state 2 and x is, is not input is 0 and then state 1 and state 4 those conditions you had a 1
So we hit next here. This is the summary. You have four states, clock, reset, and um, input. And uh, so and it will give you the state uh, diagram here. Um, here we save it. And then we can get an HDL file from it. So we hit the generate the HDL file. In this case, it will be VHDL. So here we're just going to ask it to generate a VHDL file. And here it is. You go through it and look at it. But then basically it's going to perform that. The reason we use that tool because we didn't want to actually sit down and type it, the whole thing. And uh, all right. So this is the HDL file. As you can see. Okay, now the next stage is to run the, run the project. So we're going to run it. And start the. So we're going to run the project, compile it basically. And then you have to have a vector waveform in order to be able to display the output. So we're going to create a new vector waveform like we've done on a schematic capture. So better be the same name as your file. And then uh, defining the end time and defining your grid scales. And here we have to list all the files we had here. And there it is. And we have to add a state machine. Condition here. Then we we'll have to set up a clock for it. You do that manually, or you know, just set up the time for it. You have you want to reset this thing at the beginning. Make sure that everything starts as a, as a default. So the reset is there, and then you want to define the inputs. And you can do this thing manually. Actually, you can drag it up or down by, by selecting uh, that specific area and then force it to be high or low. And then save it, the, the vector waveform, and then run the compile it, and then run the vector waveform afterwards. So this is going to run. Here it is, no errors, two warnings, and here it is. These are the finite states, so you got the, all the states there. And if you uh, zoom out, you should see the whole thing. Or we can just fit it in the windows. Oh, here it is. And this corresponds to actually your table. You actually study it and look at it. Um, and in order to find, say, going from state one and state uh, two, when the input is zero, you hit the clock, and it shows right there. Now, state three, input zero. I'll put it one and state one input one go to state two output is zero. 
So if you if you check back with the state diagram, or if you check back, and um, it's everything is exactly the way it's supposed to be. Uh, it's going to reflect uh, the table.